And summer fun brings with it a bunch of different types of medical emergencies from overexertion and heat related issues to allergic reactions. But do you know what to do or what to look for and what to do if you may find yourself in an emer emergency situation? Here to tell us is Rachel Gohagen, a s assistant athletic trainer for Idaho State. Well, thank you very much for stopping by uh, this My morning. Pleasure. First off, tell us, uh, you know, what are the common types of things you see when the weather gets warm, people get outside? Uh, what are most of the medical stuff uh, that people come down with? Oh, by far, definitely. We see he uh, heat illness. Um, as far as people exercising outside, it gets hot. Uh, their bodies, their core temperature starts to overheat. Uh, that's a, a huge concern. Um, when, when you see that, you see heavy sweating, uh, severe thirst, dizziness, and eventually it, it can lead to death. You're, you, uh, you overheat right. your insides. Um, so there you see nausea, vomiting, and if, if you see or you, you're so out with a buddy jogging, uh, get in the shade. You need to cool that person off immediately so as quickly as possible. Would you, you know, in a heat related situation like that, do you give a person water right away or do you hold off on the water or just kind of minimal water for the time being? Definitely unlimited water. Uh, get them to drink. If they can't drink, if they throw it up, that's where you're waiting on uh, EMS, on an ambulance to come in and give them IV fluids. Uh, but right away, you want to try to get water in them. You want to get as many clothes off as possible. Uh, and if there is access to a water source, a stream, cool them off their head, their armpits, their neck, it's the best place to get cool water on them. Another one that happens, heart attack. Uh, I, I honestly don't even know the first thing about symptoms when it comes to heart attack. What should someone be looking for? And like, if, if you think you may be having a heart attack, what are you feeling? The, the main symptom is tightness and pain in the chest, but it doesn't have to be in the chest. It can be in the neck, in the back, more commonly for women, that's pain in the neck. Uh, it can go down the left arm. Uh, and with that, it's a lot of people will pass it off and say, oh, I'm okay, it's just indigestion, it's just heartburn, because they don't want to admit that it can be a serious problem. But it is, they can have tightness and, and pain in the chest. And uh, there you need to get emergency care immediately. So even against their wishes, perhaps, uh, definitely call an ambulance and, uh, and and get emergency care on the way. Yeah. Then real quick, allergic reaction, you know, bee stings. I've been stung by a bee. I'm lucky I'm not allergic. But what do you look for with someone who may get uh, stung by a bee or, you know, walk into something uh, out hiking that they could be allergic to? Sure, yeah. Uh, one of the main symptoms you look at is swelling and redness, maybe a rash at the area. And you keep an eye on that, on, on those conditions. Now, if that rash spreads or you start getting hives, your, your airway eventually can, can close up and it can lead to anaphylaxis. So there's another emergency situation. You need to definitely call 911 and get somebody there immediately, uh, as quickly as possible. And usually those people know their reaction. They carry an epinephrine pin with them. And, uh, and so they, they know what to do and have an idea of what's going on. No, another thing you can do to, to be safe out in the outdoors uh, is get certified CPR certified and things like that. How do people uh, go about get, taking those classes and what are those classes like? They, I, I firmly believe that everyone should be certified in CPR, AED, and first aid. I know I want people around me who know what to do in, in case something happens with me and, I, and I'm sure that's the case with everybody. But local hospitals, I know Portniff offers classes. Uh, ISU actually offers classes. They take a day, half a day, sometimes two days, depending on how, what level certification uh, you're looking at. But for the basic uh, CPR first aid, it takes a day. Okay. And, and for a day of, and, and be able to save somebody's life, it's, it's a good trade-off in my opinion. All right, well, thank you very much for stopping by this morning.